Hey everybody, it's Becky. Welcome back to my channel. I have another homeschooling video for you guys and this one just kind of occurred to me the other day because our life has been so busy lately and I don't know why. I don't, I try to keep it like really calm and low key and not overly scheduled or I try not to overextend ourselves but for some reason lately things have just been kind of nuts. The girls have had staggered orthodontist appointments. They each have a total of three lessons per week for piano, dance, and, mute, and guitar. Then we have church on Wednesday nights. Like we're just always kind of going somewhere it seems lately. And then I've had some things going on with work and some things I've had to get done. So there have been quite a few days here lately where we haven't even had time to get a full day of school in before we had to be somewhere for an appointment or a meeting or something like that. Or if it's been something that's going on with me and I haven't had time to teach a lesson that day. So on those really super busy days, I really considered a win if we've at least gotten done the main core subjects. So math, reading, and English are really the top three that I focus on. And anything else we get done on top of that is just a bonus. So I've had to be kind of creative lately and think of some mom-free ways to get homeschool done. So things that the girls can do without me that are kind of self-guided and self-taught or things that we can do on the go. So on the way to a lesson or on the way to an orthodontist appointment or somewhere like that. Some ways that we can get school in and get school done without me having to hover and kind of be there the whole time. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. Some hands-free, mom-on-the-go homeschooling. So the first kind of hands-free, mom-free or on-the-go curriculum that really, really makes my life a lot easier is teaching textbooks. We've used teaching textbooks for years. I've used it from the beginning of our homeschooling journey with my oldest daughter who started it in fourth grade. And now my youngest daughter is using it and she started with Math 3 last year. Like it is an amazing math program that is completely mom free. They sit down and watch a lecture on the computer. It talks them through how to do everything. It shows them examples. They do practice problems along with the lecture. And then they do their math on the computer and they do have an optional workbook. You can either purchase or you can print if you have the online teaching textbook subscription. So they do have those worksheets if you want them to have extra written practice. Teaching textbooks has saved my life in so many ways. Number one, I'm terrible at math and cannot teach it. And now number two, just the convenience of their new 3.0 online version makes everything even more convenient than it already was. Previously, teaching textbooks was all on disc, and that is still an option if you prefer, but they have since also began to offer teaching textbooks 3.0, which is an online subscription, so it's much cheaper than the discs, and you can do it anywhere. As long as we have a computer, a phone, or a tablet, and some Wi-Fi, the girls can do their math. So there's really no excuse to not get math done every day. That is the great thing about teaching textbooks 3.0. Also, it is a lot cheaper than the um, original version, which was all on disc, which like I said, is still an option if you prefer that. But you will obviously have to have a disc drive in your computer and it makes it a little bit harder to take it on the go and it is more expensive. So 3.0 is a great option for money saving and convenience. And one thing I like too is because it all is all online, I've got a laptop and a computer, like a desktop computer, in my house and so sometimes my youngest daughter will start her lesson on the computer and then my oldest daughter is like well I need in the office I need to use the computer for my French because it's the only computer in the house that has a disk drive so my youngest daughter can just take the laptop go in a different room and pick up her lesson on the same exact spot where she left off on the laptop because it's all online there's no discs to switch there's no disc reader to need for the you know, for the lesson. So that makes it so convenient and so nice. And like I said, you can also do it from a tablet or a phone. So if you're on vacation or if you're in an RV or if you're in a hotel and you're staying somewhere or if you're at their grandmother's house or you're waiting in an appointment or a doctor's office, something like that, you can take your math with you and do it on the go. So teaching textbooks 3.0 is a great option for, first of all, a math program. It's a phenomenal math program. Second of all, the convenience of being able to do it anywhere as long as you have a computer and some Wi-Fi, it's a really, really great option. So that makes my life so much easier. And another way teaching textbooks makes my life easier is it does all of the grading for me. I don't even have to sit down at the end of the night and grade their math. It is all done for me. I just look and see what grade they got. And then if they didn't do great, I can erase that lesson and they can do it again the next day. If they did great or okay, they can move on to the next day. So, so no matter where we are or how busy we are, I know they can at least always get their math done. So I really highly recommend teaching textbooks as a math curriculum. It is a solid quality math curriculum, 
but the fact that they just keep making it better and they keep making it more affordable and more convenient just makes it even better. So definitely check out teaching textbooks if you are looking for a math curriculum. Another way that we get school done when we're on the go and we're super busy is audiobooks and ebooks. So I talked about this in a vlog I believe a little while ago, but we are doing the Good and the Beautiful for history for this year. We just switched over from what we were using to the Good and the Beautiful. And one thing about the Good and the Beautiful is they do have um, optional but very highly suggested read-alouds that you can do along with your history curriculum that really enhances what you're learning in the curriculum. And so it can be hard though sometimes. I, first of all, I can't read in the car if I'm driving. And even if I'm the passenger, we're going somewhere on a trip or something, I can't read in the car, I get car sick. So I think a great way to take school with you, whether it's for the good and the beautiful's read alouds or anything else, is to find educational audiobooks and eBooks that you can read or you can listen to on the go. I just recently discovered the app for our library where there's a lot of those audiobooks for free that we're interested in or that go along with our history that I can download on my phone and we can listen to wherever we go. So that is definitely a great way to get school in and get learning done when you're busy and on the go. And another really amazing resource that I utilize quite a bit is self-guided workbooks. Now this doesn't pertain to my oldest daughter as much because her curriculum is pretty much all self-guided anyway. And she's at that very independent age where she can pretty much figure out what to do on her own and she can find extra work to do on her own. Mostly this is my youngest daughter. If I um, don't have time to teach her science for the day, or if something's going on and we can't really get to our science experiment because we're gonna be out, but I still want her to do something science and educational. Same thing with writing or English, anything like that. I really love utilizing pretty much self-contained, self-guided workbooks where there's a little bit of reading, there's instructions, and there's an activity. And all I have to do is say, do your science workbook, do your writing workbook, and she knows to go to the next page, read the assignment, and do the work. And I, it just saves me so much time and when we're on the go. And even when we're here at home, I will do a certain part of the day with the her, specifically my third grader, and then uh, we'll have lunch. And once we come back from lunch, it is pretty much all independent time. So I will make a list like do science, do this, do this, do this. And she can go through her workbooks and do all that on her own. So that makes my life so much easier, whether we're here at home or we're on the go. But especially when I'm really busy or we're out somewhere and we can't get to do school at home and I can't be teaching her at home, those workbooks, self-guided kind of workbooks like that really make my life easier. And my last kind of mom-free and on-the-go tip is don't overlook educational TV and games and apps for school. Now obviously I wouldn't count this every single day. I wouldn't just let them watch TV and be like, well we watched TV, we did something educational today. You know, obviously I would keep it to a minimum. If you want to make sure they're listening and kind of retaining, you can have them take notes on whatever they watch if that's really something that's important to you. I know we did that in school. Whenever they would make us watch a movie or have us watch a movie, they would still say take notes. So you kind of had to stay awake and pay attention. Um, but you know, there are so many educational TV shows and Netflix shows. There's the Magic School Bus, there's the Who Was Netflix series that just started. Like all of these really great educational TV shows that may seem like well, we're just watching TV, but they can learn a lot from those shows. How many times have your kids repeated something they heard from a TV show? You know, they remember that stuff. So with educational TV, it's really no different, especially when they make it fun, like the Who Was show and the Magic School Bus show and things like that. But even on the go, it's really easy to rent DVDs from the library or you can stream them or something through your phone, whatever your options are for that. But there are so many ways to get some educational value in your day. Even if it's not from a book and even if it's not from you standing there teaching, they can still learn a lot by watching TV and watching educational shows. Same thing with games and apps. My um, youngest daughter, we have a couple games on the iPad that she's allowed to play. Um, right now, specifically, there's a multiplication game. She also has a telling time game that I will let her play either at the end of the day if she's finished all her work and she still wants to play a game. I'll say, well, you can play an educational game. Or, you know, if we're at her sister's piano lesson or somewhere like that on the go, we can bring it with us and she can do a little bit of that on the go. So it definitely is educational and it's not necessarily out of a book, but she still learns a lot that way. And I honestly think sometimes she learns more from those kind of games than she does at home because it's something fun that she wants to do. So definitely be looking always for educational apps and games your kids can play. 
whether they're at home or on the go, to make your life a lot easier. So those are my suggestions for how to homeschool without you being involved, or if you're on the go and you're super busy and you don't have time to do school at home, I really, really hope they are helpful. I These are things that I utilize pretty much on a weekly basis and sometimes on a daily basis to make sure that we're still getting school done and we're still getting learning done, but we're able to make it work with our life. And I think that's really, really important because obviously if I had to just not do school any of the times that we had to go to the orthodontist or so-and-so or this place or that place, you know, we've been missing out on a lot of school. So I had to figure out ways to bring school with us when necessary, or even if we're home and I've got something going on and I can't necessarily teach a lesson right then, I have these things to say, you know, go do your math. It's all online, you know what to do. You go get your science workbook, you know, just read the assignment and answer the questions. You know, all of those things are kind of self-contained, self-guided, and it's really easy for me and it's really easy for them, but I know they're still getting an a good education, they're still learning, and that makes me happy. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up. I will have everything linked below for you guys I talked about, so teaching textbooks and some of the workbooks that we're using that I was talking about. Um, and I'll try to remember to link the games too that my youngest daughter is doing for time and multiplication because those are really fun and cheap. So hopefully it was helpful. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and hit that little notification bell so you'll be notified every single time I upload a video and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video. If you wanna see two of my older videos, you can click the links right here. And if you wanna to subscribe to my channel, if you haven't already, and you definitely should, you can click right here. I upload every single week. I have some links in the description box for some of my favorite stores and products, as well as my PO box address. Check out those links if you're interested in those, and I will see you guys in the next video.